Okay, this is an emergency Bitcoin video, Bitcoin emergency video. I have to make you aware of a signal that was just triggered uh, here with the close, with the close of the Wednesday session. Bitcoin is now moving into the Thursday session, but with the closing bar that we had on on Wednesday, uh, we triggered uh, a sell signal for Bitcoin. And again, I'll show you that here again, we had the breakout here, lighter volume here, it picked up. We came right back up to this high. We were just um, about $200 underneath it or so, uh, just uh, at that uh, 73,000, uh, what was it? 794 was the peak there. And we came up here again, a couple of hundred dollars below that. Uh, again, you still have a possible double top. We still may even overthrow this level just a bit. Uh, but again, I want to show you the signal that was just triggered with the Wednesday bar that we had. So again, if go watch my last video, I'll link it at the end of this one. If you didn't watch it, uh, I talked about we've had a breakout, but there is still more work to be done by the end of the week. Again, we've got to see the weekly charts turn bullish. We've got to be able to move to a new high. We've got to be able to hold above 69,000. So there is more work to be done. Uh, but I wanted to uh, show you the uh, signal that was triggered. Let me uh, flip over to that. But before I do, I just want to continue to point out again, I have my signals that are forming divergences. OK, and I remember I talked about that forming on the RSI and the MACD. Um, RSI almost has two equal peaks. I talked about it with momentum. I talked about it here uh, with uh oscillator and on others again a divergence this is why i told you i thought we were going to go above that level again i thought we had still at the resistance zone uh, we went above that and tested the march high i thought we'd go to you know high 69,000 on into 70,000 i told you maybe 71,000 70 and 71,000 was a resistance zone we went here to just under uh the previous peak in march and then turned down but it was this bar right here that triggered uh, a sell signal. We got that bar and it triggered a sell signal uh, for the uh, daily chart. Let's take a look. Keep in mind, we are forming these divergences. Remember I told you about the divergence back over here uh, before we had the sell off and I told you about that. Uh, we've got a similar thing going on right here. And the bulls have to prove if this is a real legitimate breakout, we've got to see evidence of that. And again, uh, if the weekly charts turn bullish and we see evidence of that, then again, I will be uh, bullish longer term as long as the weekly charts can remain bullish. Uh, right now, we've seen the weekly charts turn bearish. And again, I've been talking about uh, going back and forth from bullish to bearish as the uh, moves have been made. And again, I talked about the uh, bottom here uh, that uh, again, just after the 52,000 area, I called a bottom. I called this rising wedge. Part of the reversal is because of this divergence. Uh, we had a bull flag set up. I called a bullish divergence here that set up on the four hour chart. And again, uh, this rally right here. And I told you momentum uh, flipped right here briefly. But again, I was still expecting a little bit higher of a level to form a divergence uh, on the RSI and other indicators like this. RSI almost has two equal peaks, but we have divergences on other oscillators. So uh, that did happen. We did go uh, above the that 70, 71,000 resistance all the way to test the previous high. So uh, again, I talked about all of this previously. And again, um, go look at the signal. Before I do that, again, we closed above that upper Bollinger Band uh, here in the daily time frame. We closed back below it with the Wednesday session. We're just a few hours into uh, the Thursday session. I couldn't make a video for you right when we had the close, uh, but I got to it a couple hours later here uh, as the uh, uh, session is underway. But look at the uh, look at the volume here. We're starting to get a little bit of uh, distribution as we've had that rally. Remember, a lot of this was uh, short covering. OK, there was there was a, a, a liquidation move that was made here, pushing up and, you know, wiping out the, uh, the the shorts, causing them to have to cover a squeeze move. A short squeeze was done. So, again, uh, once that's finished, we'll be watching to see if there's evidence that this is the real deal. There was good volume. Uh, on the breakout, but part of it was uh, that uh, the shorts uh, were being liquidated. They were being wiped out and you've got to put that uh, in, you know, proper uh, in its proper place with the analysis 
of of the breakout so we'll be watching but we did push to an extreme above the upper bollinger band and close back below it uh that in itself could be a uh a reversal signal often uh, with Bollinger Bands it is we had that over here went down and then we came back up and we tested that high uh, tagged the upper band and then we sold off but again just uh, something worth paying attention to we closed above the upper band and then we closed back below it my trend line moved on me here let me fix this but check this out now let me just bring it up here now again I'm gonna show you some things uh, that are happening here but again I talked about again do we get reversal signals setting up like what we had at some of these tops you know and and uh you know these bottoms the reversals that have taken place these signals have been absolutely amazing so i told you i'd be watching the signals we had something triggered with the wednesday session so i'm bringing that to you right now we just had it but it, it's not valid until we get the close on wednesday which it did just do a few hours ago again this could still be a legitimate breakout we could end up getting a back test and and uh see the weekly signals uh, turn back to bullish. That is still possible because we did break out and it was on decent volume. But again, like I said, it could just be a short squeeze. Look what happened with the close, with the close on Wednesday, uh, that triggered a potential reversal bar right there. Do you see this? Okay. And then right now, as we're starting the session, here for Thursday, we're getting another warning sign of, hey, a possible top could be here, or we could see a short-term pullback like we had over here, the warning sign. There is no T above here warning of a short-term top yet. Uh, we may not get it if, this is, if these signals were warning of a top, and this is reaffirming these previous signals with the bearish divergences that are forming on some indicators. Now, again, that's what we're watching for is, do the bulls give us a legitimate breakout? And if they do, then then it's, you know, it's real. Uh, but it has to be proven. It has to be, there has to be solid evidence of it. And we'll, we'll see that with the weekly charts. We'll see that with, um, you know, other signals turning bullish and then remaining that way, clearing resistance levels and being able to stay above them. So again, do we have staying power or is this just, you know, a short squeeze and it's going to end up filling? Again, we still have the possible head and shoulders pattern that I've talked about here. Uh, if this thing ends up filling, if it's a false breakout or if we pull back and we go up a little higher form of divergence on the four hour chart and still come down, that is still a possibility. Nobody thinks that's possible right now. And again, uh, we had a breakout in 2021 where we went just above the previous peak earlier in the year. We just did, you know, we're right now we're just below it. And it, it was a false breakout. Everybody believed if you if you thought Bitcoin was going to crash 78 uh, percent, you were out of your mind. And we were told Bitcoin was never going below 60,000 again. So, again, it's what I'm looking for is evidence here. Again, I really don't care whether Bitcoin goes up or down. I really could care less. I can make money either way. I'm a trader. I really don't care. Most people do. Most people uh, don't believe Bitcoin goes down with the moon boys and their followers, most people believe Bitcoin just goes up. And that's what I've been talking about. That's why I'm telling you again, this whole move of $21,000, uh, again, my signals caught the majority of that with the flip of momentum and later the trend signals. I talked about that in great length of detail in my last update. But again, the moon boys are just now saying, oh, we're coming back up to the, the March highs. They're saying, oh, it's a breakout now. Well, again, my signals turn back to bullish down over here, and then the bullish signals reaffirmed right here, uh, again, with the bounce off the 100 period moving average. So again, if signals all turn back to bullish, then great, then we can be bullish and go higher. Uh, if signals revert back to bearish, uh, and the weekly charts can't flip the signals, uh, then there's some real problems. But here, I wanted to bring to your attention the signal here from the Wednesday bar from the close that triggered a sell signal here. And then also we are getting this red dot. Now, listen to me, uh, this, this, this red circle right here is warning, hey, be on the lookout. Now we can get a series, it can move, it can go to the next bar, but it's showing price exhaustion. That's what it's showing. Over here, we had this red bar or this red circle. Uh, it started showing up uh, a couple bars earlier and then it, it was there and then again it was signaling hey reversal could be coming or a pullback 
Now here it was just a pullback. We got these sell signals. Maybe they're larger. This is part of one big, uh, big sell signal here, but they, it did give us a pullback so far. Maybe that's it. Maybe we have a legitimate breakout, but maybe this is a larger, larger reversal. And this could have been the warning sign right here. And again, the divergences that I've been talking about on indicators. So again, going to be watching to see how this unfolds. Now I've talked about again over here, how we had a peak and and uh, and then we turned down. We got some of these sell signals. We went up. We went a little bit higher, and then we turned down. We didn't get a uh, another uh, circle there, and we didn't get another T, and we didn't get another sell signal right there. Uh, but uh, we are here, and it could be uh, you're just getting a double dose of signals. Uh, it could be we just get a pullback again. It could be either one. So we're going to be watching. But a uh, a reversal signal is being triggered here. That doesn't mean we can't go a little bit higher again. You got it over here and we went a little bit higher, but then we turned. It's showing, hey, price exhaustion could be taking place here. Does that just give us a back test? Does that give us a failed breakout? We'll be watching. Uh, again, balance of power is still positive. My trend signals are still positive. I told you, again, on Sunday, my momentum signal turned back to bullish here. On Monday, my uh, momentum line turned back to bullish. And again, uh, those signals were triggered before we got that big move there on Tuesday. Uh, so now we're getting this signal. So I wanted to make you aware of that, give you a red alert warning sign that, hey, uh, this could be meaning we see a sell off. Do not make the mistake. Listen to me. Do not make the mistake of thinking, oh, we can't go a little bit higher. We still can if we form a divergence on the four hour chart. As I've talked about, we are forming larger divergences between these two peaks. But I'm talking about a, a in the more recent price action on the four hour chart. So I wanted to bring this to your attention. The signal showed up during the session here on Wednesday. It showed up and it ended up closing that way. So it is there. And uh, again, this can move, but we'll be watching. Do we see other signals? Do we start seeing a pullback? Do we get a divergence on the four hour chart and then turn? We'll be watching. And if we get the turn, is it just going to be a back test of the breakout? you know, a pullback and then and then we resume the advance uh, or is it going to be a failed breakout? We'll be watching to see how it unfolds. And again, if we get a legitimate breakout, we get a legitimate breakout again. I really don't care whether Bitcoin goes up or down. Uh, I just want to have my signals be correct. So just warning you and I warned you that this this scenario very well could happen. And again, it is possible we have a failed breakout. It's also possible that we just get a back test of the breakout. We'll be watching to see how it unfolds. And there are still very big problems uh, with the breakout. Uh, the bulls still have hurdles. We have the election uh, next week. Uh, you know, we're going to be getting um, the inflation data uh, uh, Thursday. We're going to be getting the jobs report on uh, the, the PCE inflation data on Thursday. We're going to get the jobs report on Friday. We'll have next week the election. Um, and again, then we'll have uh, the Fed on Thursday. It's being moved from Wednesday to Thursday because I probably because of the election is on on Tuesday, which is what usually the day usually the Fed begins their meeting. So they're just moving it uh, be, probably because of the election. Again, in order for this signal to play out, we've got to see the momentum line be turned back. We got to see the bars begin reflecting momentum turn back to red. They're seeing uh, signals turn, but you can see the signal uh, there. I do want to tell you this, that the signal did get there by the final close. It can be canceled out if this bar negates this bar. OK, just want to let you know that it may not be, but sometimes the second bar after you get that signal uh, can negate it and make it go away. So just just like the, the red circle, uh, it can move. Uh, this could be canceled out if we can rally further. It's there right now. As of the close on Wednesday, it showed up. So again, I just want to make you aware of that. Uh, here we had one show up. We went down further. We went back up. It did not cancel out that other signal. And you got uh, two signals back to back. And again, it was just a pullback, but it could be warning of a larger top uh, developing. And here I have the bars reflecting the trend. OK, and they're they're still bullish there. Uh, momentum is still bullish, as we just saw a moment ago. But again, these signals have really 
done a very good job on calling uh, tops and bottoms with momentum, uh, major uh, turning points. It's been pretty remarkable. I told you I'm looking for diversions to develop right here in all likelihood. I told you I was looking for a higher high above this level. I told you I thought we were going to push up through here. And again, I told you I was looking for a peak around 68, 69,000. If we went up through that level on into the 70, 71,000, well, we went past that level uh, up to test the previous uh, high uh, in the uh, the mid 73,000 area. I think it was right around 73,000, just under 73,600. We were a couple of hundred dollars below the March peak. So here you've got the sell signals, okay? The, the potential reversal. Um, again, if this sig these signals are not canceled out, which again, now they're showing up, and again, if they play, begin to play out, we could see this divergence begin to carve out here um, with momentum. So just something worth paying attention to. Now, again, it doesn't mean that we're going to see a reversal. It could just be a pullback or a throwback uh, of the breakout. And then we go on our way. We could see a move here where we get a false move and take this out and then come back up and go. Could be that we back test. Could be we go a little higher. And then we come back and we back test and we go on our way. But it could also be a failed move. Um, so do keep that in mind. Now, you want more details of what's going on and, and looking at things, go watch the video that I made uh, yesterday. I'll link it at the end of this video. I went into great length and detail, but I wanted to update you on the signals that are now appearing as we hit that upper Bollinger Band. Uh, just some things I'm paying attention to here in uh, the in the daily time frame. Remember, I told you it was the bullish signal down here that called the reversal. We got these bullish signals showing up, okay? Uh, just go back a little bit here. I told you again about the bullish signal uh, with the bottoming tail over here in July. I told you about the uh, topping signals over here. So again, these signals have been pretty good, pretty good. Actually, the momentum here with these uh, 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 Bs marking the bottom and these Ts marking the tops uh, for short-term momentum moves, uh, they've been pretty good. Again, you got a peak here, went a little bit higher, and then you got the turn. Uh, so again, pretty good signals. I'm making a special red alert video here to let you know about this signal. I'll be watching. Does it get canceled out? Does it get canceled out, the, this uh, reversal bar? Or again, is it reaffirmed? And if we do go higher, it could be canceled out. But if we start to go down, or even if we go up, it still may not get canceled out, like I said over here. So again, I'll be watching to see. Uh, again, usually the next bar or two uh, triggers the signal, whether uh, it is a uh, reversal signal here or a bullish reversal signal down here. Usually the next bar or two uh, really uh, uh, validates that a signal so it's just uh, again it appeared it appeared with uh, the uh, the Wednesday session there so we'll be watching we may see the four hour chart still form a divergence here as I've talked about we reach an extreme we pull back I told you about this in my last update again we still may come up here and end up forming a divergence but that reversal signal on the daily chart still may survive uh, and we just may form a divergence here. If we get a lower high, we'll be watching to see if we saw further and then attempt it later. Uh, we'll see how it unfolds. Do we uh, end up getting a breakout and a back test in that daily time frame? But I'm watching for a divergence right here, uh, just like I was watching for a divergence here and the bullish divergence over here. These signals have served us well. Uh, really, really good signals in the four hour time frame. But I am looking for a divergence here. Does one have to form? No, but uh, we may have just reached an extreme but you could still form a divergence. And like I said, if we go higher, that um, that reversal signal I showed you in the daily chart, it could get canceled out, but maybe not. I am watching for divergence here just to let you know. It was a divergence is on the four hour chart and the RSI and the MACD that again, helped me call these turns over and over again. Again, even, uh, even with this divergence right here, again, I told you, I still thought we were gonna go higher into the resistance zone when we overthrew that just a little bit. And now the MACD is rolling over the stochastic, or I'm sorry, the RSI is turning down. So again, we'll see if a, uh, a bigger sell off happens and then we go back up and, and try to form a divergence or not. You don't have to, again, you don't have to have a divergence. You may have just had an extreme reached, but 
oftentimes you do form divergences. You can see them all over the place on this chart uh, with the RSI there. Watching, you know, does that peak uh, hold at the upper Bollinger Band and we close back below the upper Bollinger Band or do we try to form a diversion surrounding it? We'll be looking at that, but we are seeing the MACD roll over here on the four hour chart. Don't forget, along with some of the daily uh, divergences, we're forming one right here on the print parameter here in the most recent price action uh, here with this peak over here. So we've got this uh, divergence going on. That's why I was expecting uh, a, a push up, you know, into uh, above the previous peak here into the high 69 on into 70 or 71,000. Well, we overshot that and we tested uh, the previous peak from March, but this divergence is still developing here. Uh, so again, that is problematic. And again, could give us a back test, could give us a fail breakout. Again, we're looking for evidence. If we have a, a legitimate breakout, we need to see solid evidence of that, okay? And I've told you what to watch for. One reason why I told you I was looking for a move above this previous peak at the 69,000, just under 69,500, was because I was looking for divergions on the RSI and the MACD. Well, the RSI has moved back up to that peak, and really you have almost two equal peaks here. Possible Class B diversions uh, also could be the RSI moves to a new extreme here, but we're almost at that same uh, area. We're, we're pretty much right at it. So again, I'm watching that. If we get a divergence in the four hour time frame, we could still come up here and hit the trend line from these lows over here. And again, we'll be watching uh, to see if that happens. So again, that could take us above the previous peak over here, uh, just ever so slightly where we're just below it. And we can go up and hit, hit that level and try to break out above that and then boom, get a, uh, a rug pull or get a back test, a legitimate breakout, a back test over here, or uh, a failed uh, a failed breakout uh, where we get a reversal. And again, you still have a head and shoulders if we end up breaking, coming back and breaking some of these trend lines. But again, do we get a successful back test here, test this level, uh, or even overthrow it and get back above it, hitting 69,000, 68,000 there? Or do we again uh, get a fail breakout? Do we get a fail breakout or do we get, you know, a eventually get a back test? and a successful breakout. So we'll be watching as the bulls and bears fight it out for control. I was looking for a diversions because we've had divergences at these other peaks. Still may get it here, and we'll be watching. Again, there's still the possibility of a double top, but the bulls, uh, if they can pull it off, they've got to prove themselves, got to turn all my signals, which are correct, back to bullish and keep them that way. Clear these levels of resistance, clear 69,000. You can drop briefly back below it or go higher and drop back below it. But again, you've got to bounce off that 69, 68,000 area and then be able to hold above it for the duration of the bull market if we have a legitimate breakout on our hands. I was looking for a divergence on the MACD. The MACD moved higher than this peak over here, but we do have a divergence developing on the histogram, which is a difference between the MACD and the signal line. We've got one on the stochastic as well, and the stochastic is rolling over with the session. So again, that's why I wanted to show you the signal, because uh, again, if we do start to see a big sell-off on Thursday, and we're going to get uh, we're going to get the PCE data, uh, the stock market is going to get more earnings. Going off right now, we had earnings uh, in after hours, and right now it's uh, the uh, futures are selling off a bit. So we're going to be watching to see do we start seeing selling pressure with Bitcoin off of that upper Bollinger Band, or do we uh, do we try to go up here uh, again to test the peak over here and to test um, maybe the trend line right here, this trend line and this uh, area here. So we'll be watching these levels of resistance, and I want to make it clear. We're hitting that upper Bollinger Band. We still have divergences on my oscillators that are developing. Okay, and again, this is what I was looking for. Why I was looking for, again, slightly higher high than this level. And again, we went a little bit past that. These divergences could still play out, but it also could be bullish in that uh, they do start producing volatility. Maybe it just gives us a successful back test of the breakout. We'll be watching to see as the bulls and bears fight it out. Again, uh, I'm watching to see who is going to win. We have divergences forming on my oscillators. Uh, again, some class B, some class A divergences. So again, we're gonna be watching to see what happens here uh, for the balance of the week with Bitcoin. I talked about the breakout in the weekly time frame. I told you again, uh, by the end of the week, do we have a topping tail back below the trend line, back below 69,000? 
like we had over here, like we had over here, you know, and here, do we have something like that? Or do we have a legitimate close above that trend line, above 69,000? Uh, we've struggled uh, to hold above 69,000. This is our 10th attempt to uh, to do that. So we're going to be watching to see what the close looks like. We're, now we're up 6.41%. We were up 8% at the highs. Uh, we've turning down off those levels. We'll see if we get a topping tail uh, before the end of the week or if we get a legitimate breakout. And does a weekly chart close positive? Uh, with the bullish signals and confirmation here, or is that canceled out before the weekends? We'll be looking as the bulls and bears fight it out. Again, here, momentum, possible diversions. And on some of my other oscillators, I showed you I have divergences. On the RSI, you have almost two equal peaks. On some of my uh, indicators, we have slightly lower uh, highs. So again, I'll be watching. Does this signal uh, play out? Uh, does it remain or does it get canceled out? We'll be watching. It is warning a price exhaustion. That's what it's warning. Uh, so we'll be watching. Warning that we could get a pullback or a possible reversal. Great Scott, did you hear what I said? It's warning of a possible pullback. We may still go a little higher and then pull back, but it's warning of a possible pullback or a potential reversal. We don't know which one. But again, uh, we're getting these signals that are warning, hey, it, this there might be a top right here. This might be, uh, the whole thing together is, is uh, might be warning of a topping process. So do keep that in mind. This might just be warning of, again, the pullback right here. But I'll be watching uh, right here. See this little blue line right here? This is the, uh, 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 the impulse line. If we start seeing momentum flip, it's going to be the first to flip here. So I'll be watching. Do we go up and the, the signals kind of go away or uh, or uh, eventually uh, go on a little bit further. Again, the circle can move uh, with each bar, uh, but it's warning, hey, prices might be getting tired. Uh, so again, we'll be watching. But uh, again, when if we do start to turn, I'll be watching right here with the, uh, uh, the impulse line and the momentum line usually turns right after that. Uh, but again, it, it gives up... Uh, it looks at more short-term price fluctuations. So again, uh, will the signal remain? Will the signal get canceled out? I'll be watching. And again, it really depends on today's bar uh, if the signal will get canceled out or if it will remain. We'll be watching today's bar. But it did show up. I wanted to make you aware of that. And that's why I'm doing this special Bitcoin Red Alert video.